Hello and welcome to the Hockey News. I'm Stephen Ellis and joining me today is Sarah Nurse. All right, Sarah, well, it's been a few days. We've had, the hockey world's had some time to adjust to the Toronto Maple Leafs falling once again in the playoffs. And this time it was a little earlier than usual because of the play-in round. The Leafs just didn't look like the better team in a lot of that series against Columbus where Columbus just played a really strong defensive game. And that was where Toronto really struggled at. And it didn't help that whenever the Leafs needed a big save from Freddie Anderson, it seemed to not happen. And he didn't allow a lot about a lot of goals in that series. It's just the ones he allowed just didn't help. Looking at this, where do the Toronto Maple Leafs go from here? Do they have to make moves? Do they, who do they go in a target? What is next? Because I think there's a, so many more questions than usual for this team, especially with the flattened salary cap making it harder to make moves in general. Mm-hmm. I think you look at the Toronto Maple Leafs, and obviously they have a lot of offensive weapons. And I believe that defense wins championships. And so mm-hmm. the Leafs are lacking in not only their decor lineup, but their overall defensive play. I like Morgan Riley. I like Jake Muzzin. They provide that veteran experience, the leadership on the back end. Um, But I think going into this offseason, it's time for the Leafs and Tyson Berry to part ways. And that's not because Tyson Berry is not a good defenseman. It's because the Leafs were not a right fit for him. And ultimately, you need a mutually beneficial relationship for anything to work. Coming out of their development and with the Marlies, I look at Timothy Lilligren and I also look at Rasmus Sandin, who is in his second year of his entry-level contract, I believe. And so if he can come into training camp ready to go and and make an impact on the Leafs decor, I think that'd be fantastic. And also Lilligren, you look at him, he was a first-round draft pick in 2017, and he needs to come in and show why he was a first-round draft pick. Yeah, and that's the thing with the, when you look at the Leafs, they've defense is the biggest issue because when when Barry was out, and Muzzin was out, the Leafs were relying so heavily on Morgan Riley, and then every time Cody Cece hit the ice or Martin Marinson, you got worried. And, and the way I looked at it, <laughs> it was it was pretty scary. You did. Yeah. yeah, you did. <laughs> Morgan Riley can do everything. He's a, one of the best defensemen for a reason. But then you go out there and you see Travis Dermott. He, he's a good, solid defenseman, but he was having to play more than usual. Martin Marinson mm-hmm. and Cody Cece, uh, at times, you question if they're actual NHLers. And, and when you when you take that into account, I think it's they need some depth. But is the question going to be bringing up Logan and, and Sandy? Is that what's going to fix this team? Because that you like you said, they're still young, they're rookies, they don't have a lot of experience. But it, are the Leafs going to need to get someone who's more of a veteran but who's reliable in a second pairing role to kind of alleviate some of the stress? Because while those guys are are very young, pro, very talented prospects and will be leaders in the short term, or I should say long term in the short term, do they have a fix so they can take some of the pressure off Morgan Riley? I don't think the Leafs are ready to bring in a veteran defenseman, you know, a a 30, a 31 year old defenseman to come in and be an impact because I don't think the Leafs are ultimately ready to win a Stanley cup yet. In maybe two, three years, I think that would be perfect, but I'm not sure that they're there yet. I think bringing up the youth and helping them develop is going to have a bigger impact in the long run. Um, on this decor really. And I also look at a couple other key players. Like you look at Kerfoot, Janssen and Kapanen, like one of probably one of the three of those guys need to go. Maybe even two. Right. Exactly. Maybe in two. And I look at, for me, Kerfoot, he's a no brainer. He needs to stay because we talk about the defensive play Mm -hmm. of the Leafs. He's a two way defensive centerman. And that's a guy that needs to stay. And you need to find more players like that that can play that role. You need to have players that can play defense. Um, Nick Robertson coming up, he can take Kapanen's spot, he can take Janssen's spot, and at a much cheaper price tag. Yeah, that's the thing. It lo- definitely looks like they'll need some depth, but the problem is they are in a, a, ca- a tough cap situation with only about 4.9 projected in cap space for next season, and the, the cap's not going up. And the name that's always mentioned is one that should go, according to some fan bases, Will and Nylander and his big contract. But I also don't think that's the answer because he's a guy when he's going – He's on fire, and we saw with how good he was at the World Championship last year and then turned it into a very strong bounce-back season for him. Uh, he's a tough guy to move, and I don't think it's worth it. But at the same time, you, you mentioned those guys who could move, but it's it's guys like Marner and Nylander that get the most attention as someone who should leave due to their contracts. But that's not mm-hmm. easy to move. You can't move those big money guys easily. 
<laughs> exactly. I mean, you look at Toronto's big four, really, and Matthews can't go anywhere. He's he, he's the best player on your team. You can't move Matthews. Marner's a guy who I think that, you know, he's a very, very good player, but I think his contract's a, a tad too big, mm -hmm. maybe one or $2 million too big. And then Nylander, again, like, when he's going, he's going. So he's a tough guy to move to. And he's also, you have to look at these guys, Marner, Matthews, Nylander, they're 23 years old. And so that's, that's youth. That's, that's a lot of players that have time to develop. Um, you have John Tavares, who's obviously that veteran leader, but he's somebody that you look at and you're looking at five years down the road and you're like, what kind of player is John Tavares going to be? And I know that he has that no movement clause. And so they're definitely in a sticky situation. And I mean, Kyle Dubas has made it clear that Mitch Marner isn't going anywhere. And I hope that Mitch Marner doesn't go anywhere, but they're definitely going to have to find some solutions. That's the thing. You've, you mentioned Robertson earlier. That's a guy who'll be really big in the lineup. The one who has got a modified no trade clause that I almost thought if he was to be open to a trade offer would actually bring some value is Zach Hyman, a guy who's got a small salary, just under $3 million. And he's definitely a very impactful player can play top six, but at that salary and with his impact, I think he's actually got some good value. But again, the, the modified no trade clause makes that complicated. I do want to ask, Frederick Anderson, do you have belief that he can get the job done because he hasn't won a playoff series with this Leafs mm -hmm. team? And it's not been his fault, but again, he's not necessarily taking the team to new heights either. I think the issue with Frederick Anderson is he is a very good goalie and he's proven that he's a very good goalie. But you look at the Leafs and if the Leafs had Corpus Allo in net, if the <laughs> Leafs had Carey Price in net, Carter Hart in net, they win that series. And I think that's the difference maker is that although Frederick Anderson is a very good goalie, he's not stealing games and he's not winning games for the Leafs when they need that little extra boost. And I think that's the issue. Uh, his track record in elimination games is not good. And I don't think that ultimately that's a guy who's going to take you to a Stanley Cup championship. If you put money on Corpus Allo being an impact player in the Stanley Cup playoffs this season a year ago, you'd be like the richest person on the planet. I don't think anyone <laughs> saw that happening, let alone happening in August. But again, very weird times. Thank you very much, Sarah, for joining me. Make sure to check out the hockeynews.com for our daily playoff coverage.